Good morning, folks. You are looking at a small active region field setup that has failed to produce any sunspots. We have your top alerts and top science news, but let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com finding the last 24 hours on our star and the central coronal hole. Behind that, there is a dark patch that may be a trailing opening, and between them there is a thin, longitudinal filament that has stealthily snuck onto the Earth-facing disk. With no sunspots, there are no flares, but the solar wind is of interest. Slight density and speed rises the last 12 hours have increased geomagnetic disruption slightly, but the more important story is the phi angle, blue, second from the top, where we've awaited a steady set in at 180 degrees to signify a full connection to the new coronal hole, but it has been highly unstable, a bit all over the place. That means the geomagnetic disruption isn't anything near what it was last week, and our connection to this coronal hole is taking longer to organize properly than I had anticipated. This has brought good news in terms of seismicity as large magnitudes have tagged in rare locations for the last two days and taken a breather. Canadian rumble was followed by a 5.9 in the junction well offshore of Ecuador. It's not so normal for Jamaica to have 4.7s. And after a 5.7 at the South Sandwich Islands, we had the third rarity, just offshore Portugal. And we're not talking about those mid-ocean islands they've got either. Quickly want to share the shot I got over the eastern mountains of Albuquerque yesterday. A pancake-looking cloud got pierced by strong convection from below and was rolled around the lifting cloud like a smoke ring. A roll cloud and an O around the convection. That is a good segue into weather where we'll watch the waters off Japan first here and Jebby just jumped on shore and began to weaken quickly. Let's take a look at what the next 36 hours is going to bring for the Gulf Coast as here comes Gordon. Hopefully warnings are being heeded and everyone in the line of fire is taking precautions. As bad as that could be, we do have some good news looking further out ahead in the models. Florence is wanting to turn northward like both of the systems set to head towards Hawaii are expected to do. After Gordon, the forecasts see a bit of a breather. With August over with and the Perseids a fading memory, we look forward to the next great shower, coming next month, the Orionids. These are set to peak on October 21st and the 22nd of the year. This interactive tool and those for all the major meteor showers can be found at meteorshowers.org. Interesting article out about using meteorites to understand electron neutrino characteristics and constituency in supernova processes. That is three fascinating topics rolled together. Article link below. For those looking to find at least one thing you didn't know about the problems of dark matter and dark energy, there is a very fun paper that we used this past weekend in the podcast to break into intergalactic dust topics. As dark matter shifts to avoid the failed searches, we're seeing similar segmentation and focused what-ifs for MOND after a brutal year it's had in the major space mission category. Last but not least, a team compared three possible model types for the mass discrepancy, their Higgs models, based on at least quasi-normal matter, explained all the dark matter measures, the scalar dark matter models were highly disfavored, and the fermionic dark matter models, meaning they've had a fraction spin to the particle, like much of normal matter we know, are likely most favored. I hope you put that all together there. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Your support is appreciated beyond words, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.